The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom releases tomorrow, which is pretty insane that we're already at release date. And of course, that means all the reviews have dropped this morning. And if you guys aren't new to this, what I pretty much do is take everyone's reviews and put them in a big review bin and kind of give you all the positives, the negatives, the concerns, and the great things about Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. So I'll be touching on specific reviews like IGN, Nintendo Life, and Eurogamer for today, and also the overall reviews across the board on Metacritic. So so thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you really want to see more videos like this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe. A lot of you watching this right now are not yet subscribed. It'll only take a second. Thank you so much. And let's dive into the reviews for The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. So obviously we know what Echoes of Wisdom is about. We're playing as Zelda. There's no time to waste and try to go back through the whole thing that we already know. Like, of course, yes, Link needs help. You'll be going through the still world in order to complete dungeons in order to piece the world back together. But let's start off by how long is this game? Well, the verdict seems to be around 15 to 20 hours for the main adventure. Plus, it seems like there are going to be tons of side quests to complete after you're done with your main playthrough. Right now, the game is sitting at an 86 on Metacritic, right around a B. There seems to be mixed reviews, mostly around 8 out of 10s, 9 out of 10s across the board. And let's go through what people think were the positives and what they thought were the negatives. IGN actually gave the game a 9 out of 10 and said it's one of the best Zelda games ever. Literally, not just top-down 2D games, one of the best Zelda games. They, a lot of the time, compared this to the modern and classic Zelda games kind of combined into one bunch. You have your classic top-down 2D Zelda gameplay, the creative and open elements of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, which we could already get a glimpse at with some of the trailers. Nintendo Life would also give a 9 out of 10 and say it's one of the best top-down Zelda games in the entire series. As far as complaints, some of the things that a lot of reviewers were mentioning is that the whole battling in this game is kind of repetitive and not as fun as just a simple sword and shield that Link used to have, where it just feels almost like a Pokemon battle, where you're summoning different enemies and monsters onto the field in order to fight other enemies and monsters. But even that wasn't a complaint for them. The biggest complaint was the performance, and they went on and on about how the performance is literally up and down, and there's lots of issues with that, which we'll dig into in a second. But perhaps one of the more critical reviews that I've seen was from Eurogamer. They praised the game for the most part until you get around halfway through the review where they absolutely hate everything with the dungeons. I mean, literally, they go on and on about how the dungeons are just some of the weakest dungeons we've ever seen in the entire series and feel like watered down versions of past dungeons that we've completed over and over again. They claim these dungeons are a slog and a slow, mindless drag to get through and they don't really offer anything all that interesting and their themes are not that interesting along with the fact that it doesn't really focus on specific echoes for the dungeons, which is kind of a letdown if that is really the case. They also complain about things being brought from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom that just felt useless in this game, such as making smoothies and automatons which were really late in the game to obtain. But the smoothies would give Zelda more stamina and health in certain situations where it just wasn't needed, especially since there's no stamina bar, all it did was increase her speed of climbing or running at a slight pace. But let's jump into some overall positives from multiple reviewers and some gameplay functions that I haven't talked about. So overall, the story apparently is a lot better, and it feels a lot better as you're playing with a character that isn't just a mute like Link. This is a main character, Zelda, that normally speaks and I'm not 100% sure if she speaks to other characters in this game or can we actually see her speak and communicate but it does seem like she adds a whole new layer of depth and story since she is not a normal mute character like Link and it's actually to play as Zelda even though she plays like Link. Apparently the map is eight times larger than that of Link's Awakening which is pretty massive honestly and it's very open-ended very very similar to that of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, allowing you to use automatons and tons of different creatures and echoes to pretty much just break the game and just climb terrain that normally you couldn't do in a top-down Zelda game. I actually think this is pretty cool and it allows us to traverse the area in much better ways. Now the opinions on the dungeons do seem to be mixed. It seems like some people really do love these dungeons and had a really good time with them and some people really did not like them. Like I said, Eurogamer claims that the dungeons aren't built around specific 
Echoes, but then when I see IGN's review and same as Nintendo Lives, they show gameplay of Echoes that are specific for certain dungeons, meaning that once you enter a specific dungeon, you can then get that Echo that can be used in other areas in the world. So it almost feels like there are specific items or specific things in dungeons that can be used in order to complete that dungeon. Like I've seen, for instance, a giant wind gun that Zelda could carry around and blow sand out of the way like Gus Bellows from Skyward Sword. Now the dungeon puzzles do seem to be more open-ended, meaning there's multiple ways to complete them, and I heard there's a lot of aha moments when you do figure out the correct way, and it feels really good just like classic dungeons would. There's apparently a total of seven dungeons in the game entirely, and they feel a lot like A Link to the Past, which in my eyes is a good thing. Like I said before, a lot of people claim that this is a perfect mix of classic and modern Zelda, giving you classic dungeons in the top-down 2D perspective that we're used to, but also adding elements that definitely were needed, like tons of side quests and a side quest log in order to keep track of them, and of course, more of an open-ended nature, allowing Zelda to jump and climb up specific terrain using echoes and even her new bind ability seems to be stuff that's kind of just pulled from Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but work pretty well in this game. Like I previously stated, apparently there are tons of side quests and things to collect, including stamps scattered around the area with a little stamp guy that you go up and talk to, heart pieces, and even more for you to find, including unique caves and mini dungeons that house their own specific little boss battles, which is really, really cool. I'm actually super excited about that. It seems like the cave mechanic from Tears of the Kingdom, but there's actually reasons to go in here, and they said there's so many of them where the rewards are good, but they start to feel very anticlimactic because you're just getting so many of them. But I love this. Actual dungeons and caves with entrance that are outside of the main seven dungeons, and they have their own specific bosses as well. This is super cool, and I'm super excited about that, and that makes me really want to explore every nook and cranny of Hyrule, which is something that I never thought I'd be doing in a top-down 2D Zelda game, nevertheless. But going back to Eurogamer, he claims some of the best part of the dungeons were getting to the front door of the dungeon in the first place. They required you to do some specific tasks or do some really fun platforming in the still world, which reminded him a lot of Mario in certain situations, which is pretty cool. And this reminded me of Tears of the Kingdom as well, where I thought the lead-up to the dungeon was some of the best parts of the dungeon, not even the dungeon itself. For instance, the journey to reach the storm wind arc high above the clouds was such a climactic moment, and I loved that. It was like a cinematic masterpiece that you could actually play, and it was one of my favorite moments in the entire game. But it seems like going through the steel world and reaching these dungeons is also going to be a real big positive, as you're walking up the side of flipped terrain and things that are just kind of wacky and messed up in this world, it actually looked pretty cool from everything that I've seen so far. But jumping back into a couple of negatives before ending this, one of the biggest problems is something that Tears of the Kingdom had a problem with, is the long exhausted list of items. For instance, in this game being the Echoes, you will shuffle through so many Echoes as there's version 1 and version 2 and version 3 of almost every single enemy in the game, you'll have a very long exhaustive list to shuffle through and it doesn't even seem like the ways you can organize it is going to help either. And that was one of my biggest problems with the fusing, especially when I needed something for a specific arrow or weapon with Tears of the Kingdom, and it seems like that problem is here also. Going back to the combat for a second, yeah, it just doesn't seem to be as much fun as just simply using your sword. You'll be grabbing enemies and just chucking them off of ledges, or just spawning tons of enemies on your own, like I said before, having Pokemon battles. Uh, yeah, I, I know I said like I said before like a hundred times in this video, just, just bear with me. But yeah, it looks like this is the Legend of Zelda Pokemon as well, because yeah, lots of spawning, lots of chucking, and just watching the enemies fight each other. Now, for one of the last negatives going back to that frame rate oh my goodness yeah this seemed to be a major problem for a lot of people especially Nintendo Life where they said multiple times they would see the frame rate dip back and forth between 60 and 30 and 45 and 30 and 60 and it would just be very jarring and apparently this happens the most in the overworld where there's tons of characters on screen and things moving around and apparently in the dungeons it's a lot smoother at a smooth 60 frames and I'm actually for once gonna have to agree with a lot of the reviewers here and just state that it's kind of inexcusable at this point. 
we are now in 2024. The Nintendo Switch is eight years old, and this is a top-down, toy-like Zelda game. This is a very toy-like graphical game, and it's something that really should not be chugging like this on hardware in this day and age. It's really outdated hardware, and it's about time for Nintendo to finally reveal and release this Switch 2. This isn't turning into a Switch 2 video, but it's just very evident why people are clamoring for this so bad is because we should be able to play games like this at 1080 60 frames. I mean, come on, Nintendo. Overall, for the final verdict, it seems like The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom is not just a silly spin off featuring Zelda. It is its original, brand new, top down 2D Zelda experience and a new title in the Zelda series. Still, some things that we really haven't heard about with like how deep the actual story goes or if the boss battles are all that interesting either. But with that said, we got enough information to figure that this is a fun experience with dungeons finally making a return, whether they're the dungeons that we've been expecting or maybe they're just a little too easy for us, we're just gonna have to wait and see and try them for ourselves. But overall, I am excited for Echoes of Wisdom and it looks like it's an overall pretty fun experience. But let me know if you learned anything from these reviews. Let me know if this made you either want the game more or maybe even want the game less. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe before you head out. And like always, I'll see you all on the next one. We need that Switch too, Nintendo. See you guys.